Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 116 of the All Dolphins podcast on this wonderful Thursday, November 2nd, 2023. As we always do, we will start by recognizing a player whose jersey number corresponds to the last two digits of the episode number, in this case, 16. And Omar, I actually had to look at my uh, my reference material to find you out. cheated. I did have to cheat because number 16 is like, who the hell is number 16? And then I looked at the list. There was like, man, there were some obscure players. The one guy who stands out is a quarterback who actually started a Super Bowl for the Dolphins. Uh, had a, It's actually an interesting part of the Dolphin history. This is, I'm talking about David Woodley, who was a seventh or eighth round pick in the 1980 draft out of LSU. He was more of a running quarterback was benched at or in the set in the first half of what's been called the greatest game in NFL history, the Chargers Dolphins playoff epic at the end of the 1981 season because Woodley was not getting the job done. Don struck him in relief. The following year, the Dolphins went to the Super Bowl pretty much on the strength of their defense. David Woodley had a pretty rough outing, and that led the Dolphins to be focusing on a quarterback in the first round of the 1983 draft, even though they had just gone to the Super Bowl. And that's when they took Dan Marino with the 27th overall pick in the 1983 draft. David Woodley sadly passed away several years back, um, but he does have the distinction of starting a Super Bowl for the Dolphins. Well, I don't know that much about David Woodley, and I thank you for the history lesson. Okay, there you go. Uh, yeah, I figured you would. I mean, we're talking early 80s, so. Uh, okay, so today, Thursday, November 2nd, as I said, um, some injury movement, a little bit good news, and that Raheem Mostert and Durham Smythe both were back at practice in Germany, albeit on a limited basis. However, still no Robert Hunt, still no Brandon Jones. Um, no word on whether he's even... Come on, Brandon Jones isn't playing. Game. Let's not no, live I, in that fantasy I land. I agree. No, no, I agree. He's um, not even on the continent. No, I was, I was say, we don't. Well, as far as we know, he may have progressed in, in in the protocol. Been allowed to fly out, which is which is a lot, even if you're in the protocol. Uh, and I'm going to guess somebody's going to ask that of Mike McDaniel tomorrow when he addresses the media. But yeah, I'm I'm with you. He hasn't practiced the first two days of practice. He ain't playing. Um, and then two guys who showed up on the injury report who had not been. Surprise, surprise. Yep, which kind of suggests an injury that occurred in practice was Justin Bethel with a foot issue and wide receiver Braxton Berrios with, I believe it was an ankle, I want to say. I have it here. Hamstring, I think. Well, um, give me a second. Hamstring, very good. Yeah. Hamstring, correct. I should um, know. Wrote the story for alldolphins.com. And I would like to point out for the Justin Bethel one, I'm sorry, for the Braxton Berrios one, Braxton had a knee issue that was lingering for a couple of weeks, was wearing a compression sleeve. And a lot of times when you have an existing issue and that leg or body part starts compensating for that issue, something else gets strained. That happens 90% of the time when it comes to athletes and injuries. So um, I wouldn't be surprised. I would be shocked if this is a different leg. Interesting. But he, he had... He had been removed from the injury report, though. He was on the injury report mm -hmm. two weeks ago or three weeks ago with that knee issue, and now he popped up. So but basically, you're going with the what the knee joints connected to the hamstring is connected. That that whole school school thing. I don't remember how it goes. I'm it's been too long. Uh as far as the Chiefs are concerned, let's get out get that out of the way uh, immediately. As we're taping, we don't have their official injury report, but the word before practice was that Jarek McKinnon, the running back would be back at practice, and the same goes for linebacker Willie Gay, who's got a lower back contusion, and neither of those guys practice Wednesday. So maybe they'll be fine, and there'll be no guys. If it's not Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, or Chris Jones, does it, does it really matter? It's like a tree falling in the woods. Uh, I think Willie Gay would be semi-significant because he's a good, he's a good linebacker, and – they are very, they've already lost their best linebacker, Nick Bolton. I think if one of those three stud interior offensive linemen 
were to pop up on the injury report, it would be significant. I, I would make the argument we talk about Buffalo's offensive line. No, sorry, the Eagles' offensive line being very good. When it comes to interior offensive lines, I'm not sure you're going to do better than Casey. Hmm. But as I wrote on alldolphins.com today, where, in the, where I examined in detail the matchup of Dolphin defense versus Chiefs offense, where the Chiefs are vulnerable, along with having pretty shaky wide receiver core, yeah. is those two offensive tackles, which hmm. is semi encouraging for the Dolphins because the, uh, Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb are balling right now. Well, while you make a very candid point regarding the interior of Kansas City's offensive line, Joe Tooney, Creed Humphrey, one of the best centers in the game, and Trey Smith, I would argue to you and make the counterpoint that Jawan Taylor at right tackle and Donovan Smith at left tackle, those are opportunities that should present windows for exploitation. Isn't that what I just said? I don't know. I wasn't listening. You you, you weren't listening to me as usual, were you? No, no. no. Okay, that's cool. Yes, I said. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, that's that's literally exactly what I said. And the fact (laughs) that Bradley Chubb and Jalen Phillips are playing very, very well represent an opportunity for the Dolphins. You're like, no, no. Let me counter your point. No, no, no. You said something. You you gave them praise about the interior to the the offensive line. I was like, huh? Interior offensive line is strong. I don't think about the Chiefs. Maybe it's 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 the Mahomes window dressing. Because yeah. when you're watching Mahomes, all you're watching him do is just scramble around the field, buy time for his receivers, and then throw it throw it downfield to receivers of Travis Kelsey. And I think to myself, like, could you imagine what this guy would be like with Tyreek Hill on the field? Like, I, 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 like I'm like, man, well, that guy could really use a Tyreek Hill, couldn't he? I, I, and I know. Yeah, and then Tyreek spoke uh, on Thursday in Germany and addressed the trade and kind of said it again, and and he's never been shy about saying it. He wanted to get paid. Uh, And the Chiefs were like, as our good friend Joshua Briscoe indicated to us on Tuesday, was like, okay, do we pay Tyreek or do we save some money there and focus on other players, including Chris Jones at some point? And they decided – the, the, the they decided to make a big mistake, a massive mistake, which is exactly. how do you trade how do you trade except away the, the best player? They, I agree with you on the surface, it looks bad, except they won the Super Bowl last year without Tyreek Hill. Okay. I guess. Uh, it, I I guess it's all good. Um, but thank you. Like no, me... no, absolutely thank you. No, and not only that, they won the Super Bowl last year and now they're tied for best record in the AFC. So it's not like they've fallen apart. Mm-hmm. I can't um, help but look at their offense and man, they just need, they just need one more reliable receiver. And I, and I know I'm probably romanticizing it, but I really can't help but look at their offense and think J- Jarvis Landry, a player like Jarvis Landry can't help them. I'm like, you really are looking at this offense, looking at that lack of productivity that you're getting for the wide receiver position and doing nothing right now. Absolutely nothing. Um, to help that unit. I know you traded for Hardman and that can help you um, even though he's really just a role player, but maybe he can stretch the field with his speed, but come on, have another wide receiver who's savvy and knows how to get open along with Travis Kelsey. Like you now, is somebody going to learn the offense in eight weeks? Probably not, but goodness gracious. Let's let's not die in in the desert of thirst just because we don't we we, we have no desire to uh, hey but that's not the team I cover so no and, and they were and as as Joshua told us Tuesday is they were counting on the development of a couple of players including your good friend Kadaris Tony uh, and then Valdez Cantling I think was another one and those they, guys Sky Moore they got a they got a ton of uh, potential. Talented guys who they're 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 you know what's haven't dropped yet. Um, R- 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 um, the Rice kid is probably their most productive receiver right now. So I get it, I get and understand what they're doing. They with their roster, when you have a quarterback that's making fifty million dollars, you got to have a younger, cheaper roster at all other positions. But man, um, don't 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 squander your chances just because you've got a piss poor wide receiver unit. 
Let me look at the practice squad wide receivers. Goodness gracious. Can somebody come out of the uh, work and help them? Okay. You mentioned McCall Hardman. I wanted to touch on something. Uh, uh-huh. Number one, number one, I had need to do a mea culpa, a bad Allen, bad Allen. In looking back at the 2020 game between the Dolphins and the Chiefs, I had forgotten about this and I, because I, I went again and looked at it and looked completely at the game book and obviously jogged my memory as well. That I said that Tyreek basically had a 44 yard touchdown catch and the fourth down catch that clinched to win at the end. He also had like a 32 yard touchdown and a jet sweep in the first half. So, and the aforementioned McCole Hardman in that game had a punt return for a touchdown. Mm-hmm. And McCole Hardman also had a, punt, a long punt return that kind of sealed their win against the Chargers two weeks ago, but then came back last week and muffed a punt like I think or inside the 10-yard line, uh, which contributed to the loss. And I did the you, – you want to know how bad and how unusual that performance the Chiefs had against Denver last Sunday? And we're talking about the Chiefs and what they've done and what they have, obviously because they're playing the Dolphins. Yeah, I know it's, we're not the Dolphins, but they had 274 total yards. That was their lowest total since two, 2021. And their five turnovers was their most tied for their most since 2018. Yeah. You're, so it was like crazy. Yeah. Enough. But they're not, they're not here. Here's a sad thing about it. And maybe they were looking ahead to this offensive showdown between the hot shots and the champions uh, with the Dolphins being the hot shots. But they're not going to repeat a sloppy performance after just putting one together. <laughs> so but I, like, I like the matchups. and I do like the matchups as well. Going back to something that Tyreek Hill said, he was talking about basically the instructions when, when Patrick Mahomes starts scrambling what the receivers are trying to do and what he would tell his defensive teammates, and his words were, find Travis, find Kelsey. So I, that's priority number one, two, three, four, four, and five for me as far as what the Dolphins need to do in defense. Now, we, we've discussed this already, but I, I want to get our vote. All hands raised if we're defending Travis Kelsey with Jalen Ramsey. Uh, none. I am, and Dick Fangio kind of touched on that a little bit also on Thursday where, I mean, he kind of basically left the door open to all sorts of possibly never said anything definitive. Of course. Why are you right. going to tip off Andy Reid exactly how you're going to play him? No, but he he did say that at some point, maybe Sunday, that they'll move Jalen Ramsey around. And then before that, he had said that that Kelsey lines up every everywhere on the field. So at, so at a certain point, I'm sure Jalen Ramsey will be covering him. And I'm thinking here it may, it may be more than just – just by pure coincidence that Ramsey winds up on Kelsey. I I would love to see it. Um, everybody in the world knows that if you want to stop the Chiefs, you got to stop Travis Kelsey, who I would argue to is the best tight end ever in the game, um, the history ever. of the game. Ever. Yeah, ever. You down? Better you, than you know? Gronk. Better than Gronk. Yeah, because Gronk, come on, Gronk can't move. Gronk couldn't move in the back end of his career. Except he and, made and, catches, and he also blocked like an offensive tackle. That is true. But he couldn't move. It was no, a 10 man. Um, yeah. Oh, without a doubt, Travis Kelsey's better than Gronk. Uh, Travis Kelsey's got the got most of the – what? Yeah. Well, when you, when you start throwing without a doubt. Come on, brother. I mean, okay, I'll give you that Gronk is a superior blocker. But come on, Kelsey is like a wide receiver. That's a superior weapon. That's a threat. Like you, you could take Gronk out of the game for for the Patriots. I'm not sure that you, even if you try, you could take Travis Kelsey out of the game. Oh, but they did. Oh, but they did. In fact, you know who did? Who? The Denver Broncos in 2021, that game where they only had 267 total yards. Uh, Travis Kelsey had, I believe it was four for 19, maybe, or four for 20 something or no, it was three catches. Sorry for 20 something yards. You know who the head coach of the Broncos was that, that, that year? You, you, you give him Vic Fangio credit. That's 2021. Okay. I'm, I'm a look, I'm a look. 
see if it, see if it comes means, up on my. He was the head. He was the head coach, and you know, it was his defense. So. Yeah, but I saw some stat. I can't remember what it is now that he has a horrible record against Kansas City. Everybody in the AFC West has a horrible record against Kansas City. Everybody. All right. All right. Uh, I, I think I looked it up. He was, it was 0-6. Uh, Frank Smith, during his time with the Chargers and the Raiders, which was four years, I believe, was 2-6. and six. So, yeah. I mean, Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs have put some ugly numbers on a whole lot of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, It'll be interesting to see what they'll do against this secondary, particularly if Xavier Howard plays. I, and I'm a believer. I've been wrong before, um, but wrong pretty much twice. Because I think you know, I said he probably was going to play the last two weeks. Uh, I'm a believer that this will be the week that Xavier Howard finally plays, primarily because you get to rest all of next week. So even if you suffer a setback, you're still able to play. And more importantly, the stakes of this game are paramount and tremendously high. And right now, I would like to address that with my fellow co-host, Alan Pupard. Would you like to do that, sir? No. Talk about something else. All right. Okay. You know I can never say no to you, Omar. Go for oh, it. Oh, you just saying that sweet stuff to my ear. You're like my wife, and then you turn turn tune on me. Um, I am understanding, and I do agree with the narrative that Tua has not won a big game, and the Miami Dolphins have not won a big game, and I have said a lot of those had to do with the matchups and being on the road, which wasn't necessarily a favorable situation for the Dolphins. However, in this situation where it's going to be a neutral territory, it's like playing in the Peach Bowl. Like nobody really has home field advantage. Some people might have people cheering for them. Some people might have, the other team might have people cheering for them. And then there'll be just European fans who are cheering for the punt just because that's what they're familiar with. This is what happens in, in these European games. So neutral field. I like a lot of these matchups. I think the matchups heavily favor the Dolphins on so many different fronts, especially if Connor Williams and Teron Armstead plays. I think the Dolphins have favorable matchups at every position except for cornerback. If Teron and Connor Williams plays. Now, obviously, Chris Jones is going to be a nightmare. Travis Kelsey is going to be a nightmare. But who else? So, you know, other than Patrick Mahomes, obviously. So, I like the matchups. I think Miami's going to be able to run the ball. I think Miami's going to be able to stop the run. I think Miami's going to be able to throw the ball. I think Miami's going to be able to stop the pass. Uh, I think Miami's going to be able to pressure the quarterback. So, I like the matchups. So, Here's my question to you. Let's say the Dolphins do win this. They would be taking driver's seat, sitting in the driver's seat for the AFC championship. I mean, for the AFC number one seed. And let's say they finish solidly, win the AFC East, and sit in that number one seed. How valuable do you think that that would be towards a playoff push? Oh, that'd be huge. Um, if they can avoid, if they can avoid a cold weather game, which is not conducive to a high flying speed offense, okay. that would be, that would be huge for the Dolphins. And, and I would, I would amend your statement. If, if I may, when you said the Dolphins haven't won a big game, I would say late in the season, because I would say beating Buffalo last year was, was, was a big win. It was a big game, except it was week three. Um, this is it's is still not the, the end the end of the season. It's still not late in the season, but it's kind of halfway through the season. It's at least in November, and it's a showdown against the defending champion Chiefs. And I'm with you. I like every matchup. I think the Dolphins clearly are a better team. The only oh, I think the Dolphins up and down are a better team than the Chiefs. The only caveat. Okay. Is that we have seen? There's there's documented history that Patrick Mahomes can, can Patrick Mahomes can go nuts, 
and start doing MVP Mahomes stuff. Mm-hmm, 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 Off mm-hmm. schedule where the Dolphins are beating their offensive line and he escapes and he scrambles. Mm-hmm. Kind of some of the things that Jalen Hurts did in that Sunday night game. If you remember that fourth and three pass to A.J. Brown, mm-hmm. not like the Dolphins did anything wrong on that play. They kind of actually won at the line of scrimmage, except Jalen Hurts made the play. Um, mm-hmm. So short of Mahomes, who has, who has been good, I don't know that he's been Mahomes good so far this year, but if he has one of those kinds of games, that's where the Chiefs may be able to pull it because everything else, like I said, I think the Dolphins are a better team. Let me ask uh, you this question here, right. uh, uh, and, and we'll, we'll get into – no, continue, continue. Let me not interrupt you. Go ahead. No, what I was going to say is, and then looking at the big picture in the AFC, there are four teams that are 6-2 and two right now, Baltimore, Jacksonville, the Dolphins, and KC. And as I'm looking at the schedule here, Jacksonville is a sneaky under-the-radar team to look out for when it comes to the number one seed. As I look at their schedule, they're on a bye this weekend. And I look at the rest Cupcake of their schedule. City. It's not cupcake, but all their tough games are at home. Like they have San Francisco on the schedule. They have Cincinnati. They have Baltimore all at home. Woo! All at home. Murder's um, row right there, though. Well, but the, that in, that's interspersed with Tennessee, Houston, Tampa Bay, Carolina, Tennessee again. So it's not all tough games, but all their tough games are at home. Baltimore has most of their tough games at home as well. And so do the Dolphins down the stretch. Uh, mm-hmm. If you look at the Dolphins, they've only got the home. possibility of two cold, three cold weather games. Jets well, forget forget cold weather. They're tough games. They're really tough games. Are pretty much all at home. Dallas is at home. Buffalo's at home. Uh, and then you got out Baltimore, which is not going to be easy. Um, you're forgetting Tennessee. I think they're going to be tough. You're forgetting um, you're, the Jets. You're kidding, you're kidding right? No, I think Tennessee's going to be tough. Tennessee plays a very physical brand of football that you know this team, this team doesn't do well with. Yeah, I'm not I'm not overly concerned with Tennessee. I mean, that, that's all right. Uh, I mean, I, I, this. Yes, so this yes we shall. So anyway, bottom line is, yeah, absolutely. This is a game that's huge in terms of seeding in the AFC playoffs. Mm-hmm. And it's it's entirely possible that one of this game is going to wind up being the number one seed in the AFC. Uh, and for the Dolphins, that would be absolutely huge. Because, mm-hmm. again, if you if we go back, for example, the greatest show on, on turf, Rams were at home throughout the playoffs. Yes. And they're in a dome. So their, their speed, again, speedy teams get affected by, by cold weather a lot more than power teams. That's, that's kind of logical. Um, and if the Dolphins play at home throughout the playoffs, then they don't have to worry about it. And Vegas, and Vegas is the Super Bowl this year, so correct. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. I can see where you're going. Um, you did make a valid point to me that I, I managed to look up just because, out of curiosity, if I told you that Patrick Mahomes would throw three interceptions and be sacked three times. Would you take that? Oh, I know exactly what you're referring to, and and including a 30 yard sack. Yeah, the famous Jerome Baker play. Mm-hmm. That was crazy. I mean, because even with that, the Dolphins still lost, and the score. I as I know it was 33 27. There was a great comeback at, effort in the fourth quarter. It still was 30 to 10 for the Chiefs, and they were were on the move for another score when X picked off Mahomes on a pass intended for Hill at the, in the end zone. Why are you shaking your head? Uh, uh, I, 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 I don't think, I don't think, I don't think last game will have any kind of ramifications on this game. And I know that they had success against Pat. You. What'd you I say? You. I completely agree with you. Like I, I'm, I'm just like looking at it, and I, I really feel like watching that last game, but it, it doesn't even compute in terms of like the ramifications of it because, yeah, Patrick Mahomes is there, and you know if if, if you're telling me that I could sack Patrick Mahomes three times and have him th- throw three interceptions, I'm telling you it's a win, baby. I, and I, you know I'm looking at this, and I don't remember that last game, and I'm like, how did they lose again? But then I realize. It really doesn't matter because this is a grown-up 
Tua Tonga Valoa, where that was a baby. Um, this is a, a defense that's starting to play better, create some sort of synergy. And I give you a perfect example. Um, well, actually not a perfect example, but if you tell me that they can play against Patrick Mahomes like they played against Jalen Hurts, I'll tell you, win, write it down. Um, yeah, except for, of course, the, 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 um, the, the, the tush pushes. Um, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah which, the, which the Chiefs aren't doing anymore since Mahomes got hurt. Forget tush push, forget quarterback sneak. Mahomes got a, got a knee injury on a quarterback sneak. They're not doing that anymore. It makes sense. But I, I really like the matchups. I really like the way that Miami is playing lately, especially on defense. I wrote a column basically apologizing to Vic Fangio on alldolphins.com. Vic, I was wrong. I always preface my slander by saying you have forgotten more football than all of us, including myself, have even known. But I wasn't patient, Vic. I want you to know that I apologize for being impatient and not trusting you and not trusting that your defense would evolve and that you'd blitz more and that you'd get more aggressive and that you'd switch things up a little bit when you had more talent. But right now, the way that your defense and your unit is playing, it's ranked 15 and it's been looking sensational. Stopping the run, hunting quarterbacks, getting pressure. Bradley Chubb looks like a hundred hundred million dollar player. You've got Jerome Baker out there um, actually making impact plays. You got David Long looking like he's the best, one of the best run stopping inside linebackers in the NFL. And then of course you're benefited by Jalen Ramsey. Now let's get Javon Holland playing as well as everybody talks that he's played and you will be phenomenal. He's back. He's back to number one, number one rated safety from Pro Football Focus. Okay. No, no, I'm with you. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, all right. If you say so, like. I, I, no, that's just me. The only thing missing from the defense is, is, is takeaways. We got one. Mm -hmm. We got one Sunday with the pick by Jalen Ramsey, but there's only four interceptions on the season. Fumble recoveries is four as well, and. No, th this is where this dolphin. Th this is why the Dolphins are so much better than they were in 2020 when they played the Chiefs the last time. Is number one, their offense is much better um, because, as you mentioned, Tua was in his rookie year. He has grown as a quarterback, and the, the town around him is a lot better than it was in 2020. And then defensively, that 2020 team, I looked at, I was surprised they were like 20th in the NFL in yards a lot. But what they did is they got takeaways up the wazoo. Uh, this defense is 15 and rising fast in terms yes. of yards allowed. They're sacking the quarterback like crazy. The only thing missing are the takeaways. And I am, I am of the opinion that with Ramsey now in the lineup and X on his way back, I think the, the takeaways are going to start to come. And yes. this is why I think this is this, this Dolphin team has some scary, scary possibilities right now. I, if I could nitpick one thing that you said on that, which I agreed with 95% of it. Where are you nitpick? Go ahead. Red zone defense, goal to go defense needs to improve. Needs Now, it's not horrendous, but it's also not good. If you look at where their defense is from a, oh, red, zone, from a red zone standpoint, uh, I believe they are right now 28th, 25 0.5% of their opportunities are turning into uh, touchdowns. Not good. And, huh? But, but, but the caveat there is, again, everything with the defense has been progressing and progressing and progressing. And now not only are you getting pieces back with Ramsey and Howard, Jalen Phillips also has been like coming on like crazy lately. Now that the oblique injury is no longer a factor anymore. And there was one, one clip from Brian Baldinger on Twitter that was completely stupendous where he About is, Jalen Phillips? Yeah. He okay. is rushing inside against the offensive lineman. It's a handoff on a sweep to the right, and Phillips recognizes it quickly, 
spins around very quickly and meets the running back behind the yeah. line of scrimmage. I mean, that was beautiful. All right. I will go look for it on Baldy's uh, uh, page. I, I normally see all of those things, but I, I did not see this one. Um, and I do not remember that play. I, I'm, I'm a big Jalen Phillips fan, and I can tell you, I, I have bigger expectations than what he has produced thus far, but we, we, we shall get there in, in time, baby steps. Um, no, again, he also is dealing for several weeks with the oblique, the oblique injury. I think we may, we may need to cut him some slack a little bit. Oh, absolutely. I didn't say I'm not cutting him some slack. I mean, I know who he is and I know what he's capable of, but I, I expect Jalen Jalen Phillips to be a Pro Bowl caliber player, and I just haven't seen that yet. But in, in due time, in due time. Um, let's get into some of the stuff that offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator Vic Fangio said that that will give the, uh, our readers, or, I mean our listeners and our readers, uh, a Cliff Notes version of, of w- w- what we got coming down the pipeline. Go ahead. Like- Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, okay. So, well, Chase Claypool, he's doing a good job. And what Frank Smith said is that he's – learning the why and he's curious about the why right. and oh do the dolphins love that they love the curious player because they feel like if they teach you the why then you'll understand and execute the play better um and that approach has certainly helped from the offensive line standpoint um big fangio talked about we said jalen ramsey and what could potentially be uh in the in the defense uh, Frank Smith also talked about um, the offensive line competition and and pretty much it's going to be Lester Cotton, Robert Jones is what our assumption is in terms of the guards. I, I wish I was there so I could have asked about Liam Eikenberg and why he's not getting a legit. We did ask last week and they said, basically, we see his future at center. And, I, and now that Connor is back, I want to know if that just remains consistent or the fact that you need two offensive guards because what you're basically saying is a journeyman that was undrafted that we basically unearthed in Lester Cotton is better than the second-round pick at guard. And then Robert Jones, an undrafted player who's been in the league just as – no, I think he's been in the league four years – that we inherited – who has some talent but isn't necessarily a scheme fit for us, um, we would rather try him at guard as Robert Hunt's replacement than give Liam Meikenberg a fair shake, which, hey. That's not, that's about sums it up, yeah. <laughs> I, I, and I, I, I you know, it, it's interesting because I, I have been, had the opinion that the issue with Liam Meikenberg is anchoring down and holding his point as a pass blocker and you know he slowly 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 huh you love doing that yeah he slowly 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 is heading into Tua tongue of Aloha's face and i i just can't help but think and remember and recall when we asked mike mcdaniel one time during training camp how will you decide who's your left guard uh, who's your starting left guard? And that was when Eichenberg was in the fray. Uh, and Mike McDaniel just boldly said something that I'd never heard an NFL coach ever say in my life before. I'll let the players decide. And he wasn't joking. Well, really? yeah, but the, 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 see, I you took that to mean the, all the other offensive linemen are going to decide. I took that to mean to the, mean the play, yeah. The, the correct the players by their performance are basically gonna gonna no but if you listen and you followed up he's like the players know who's good and who they want to play next to them or around you know on their unit and who they have confidence in and I I, I lean on on their their guidance it wasn't it wasn't the oh I'm gonna let their play and performance decide and because I found that comment so intriguing I'd never heard it before except I don't Omar. Know. Except Omar, here's here's the thing. Don't you think, and I'm gonna play contrarian here because you know I love to do that. Um, but here's the thing: if the Dolphins had a strong conviction on a particular player who for whatever reason didn't necessarily wow or please his teammates another way, and they were like, We'll go with the other guy, don't you think the Dolphins would the coaches would would step in and say, 
Okay, thanks for your input, but that's our guy. Oh, many many coaches have, and many coaches do. Oh, but I, I but, and I think Mike McDaniel also would be one of those. Can I also point out something? We talked about you talked about Xavier Howard earlier, and why you're not necessarily 100 percent sure he's going to play, just because he said at the podium yesterday, "I'm good, I'm ready to play," and all that. Well, he said that before and wound up being inactive. <laughs> and in fact, the truth remains is he's been limited per the injury report on in the first two practices of this week. And guess what? So has Connor Williams. And I I know based on what well, you can do this all you want. And based on what McDaniel said and the tone of his voice Monday, when you were an hour out there at the training facility, sure sounded like it's a done deal. He's playing. Except to me, why is he not taking part in a full practice? If why is Jalen Ramsey not taking part in a full practice? Because he's still coming back from, from the knee injury. To me, and Xavier is still coming back from the growing injury. Well, but correct, but at, at the very until the guy is back, before before I put a stamp on it, say, oh, absolutely, book it. He's playing. I think I, I want to see. I want to see full practice, or I want to see the game status designation disappear on Friday, or I want to see him in the lineup. Okay, all right. I think those are reasonable requests. Okay. I mean, that's um, in me here. I'm just saying you want to shoot your shot at, 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 at least wear your best clothes. Um, if you, if you, you know, if you want the girl, at, at least put your, your, your best duds on. And, and if the girls in a burning building, is there necessarily a need to go in there? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if the, analogy, the analogy makes sense, but that's, um, if you really think that this game is, as Tua has said, it's going to let us know where we are as a team, and it has huge ramifications that have postseason ramifications to it. Like, I would argue to you that probably outside of the Bills and maybe some games in late December because everything will be on the line then, this game's got some serious postseason ramifications to it. It does, but so does Baltimore on December 31st, so does Buffalo on January 8th. And I, I don't want to lose Xavier Howard for three more weeks because you're making this game out to be – and it, to, to me, it all, it all goes back to is there more of a chance of, of a recurrence of the injury if he plays and if he doesn't play? And if there is, I'm not sure how comfortable I am to – and holding him out, especially since again the Kansas City the, the Kansas City wide receivers are not very good. Um, so you're comfortable beating Patrick Mahomes with and confident beating they can beat Patrick Mahomes without Xavier Howard on the field. I they can be they can beat Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs without Xavier Howard. I don't want Xavier Howard rushing back because he doesn't want to miss this game and have him be out a month or worse having having this be an issue the rest of the season and not having the real Xavier Howard down the stretch. I hate when you do this. I hate when you talk me out of decisions that I've already made. That I I I I really don't. I think it's unfair. I think it's unreasonable. It's despicable. It, it's despicable because I'm convicted on Xavier Howard playing. He's got a bye week the next week. He could rest. Hell, if he wants to sit out the week after that against the Raiders, he could do that. Hell, you want to sit out the Jets game? You could do that, um, and, and and show up for December. But this week, I feel like you got to play. You got to test it, test it, see how it goes. If you if you start feeling like you're suffering a, a setback, pull it back. But we got to go, man. It's 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 playoff. It, it, your your Super Bowl could be on the line right here. Home field advantage is going to be paramount. So you're saying, but 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 you're saying that they can't beat the Chiefs without Howard. I'm saying I don't like the chances of them beating the Chiefs without Howard, without uh, Teron Armstead, and without Connor Williams. You give me all three, I'm picking the Dolphins. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna borrow one of your phrases and put some respect on Kendall Lamb's name. I mean, he's been Damn. more. He's okay, been no, no, more no, 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 no. This ain't disrespecting Kendall Lamb. Kendall Lamb has been a godsend, but there's Teron Armstead, and then there's Kendall Lamb, and they could beat the chief, the Chiefs with Kendall Lamb. I am very, yeah, very. Man, hurt. But did you see Teron Armstead blocking downfield? I, I do. All right, that uh, Kendall Lamb is a lot of things and a nice player. He's not blocking downfield like a monster mowing people down like Kendall. I Lamb. agree, and and to me it comes down to 
not the matchup. Where are you? Where are you guys physically? If they're good to go, everybody, full blast, go in. Um, the last thing I want to do again. This is a team to me that has some serious, serious down the line possibilities. And the last thing I want to do is jeopardize those because you get too antsy about a game in week nine and then you lose a key player down the stretch or have, or have their effectiveness greatly reduced. Um, I think we should start thinking about wrapping it up. But before we do, we would be remiss if we did not mention Tyreek Hill winning AFC Offensive Player of the Month for October. Why, why are you chuckling? Because the Dolphins now own the whole they month do. of September and October. Recognize. Are we surprised? That's why. I mean, they're number one in the NFL in all the offensive categories by a wide margin. So it, it's not a surprise. And it's the first time that's ever happened in Dolphin history. Tyree killed the first non-quarterback for the Dolphins to win that award. Um, which until – No two Ricky old, Williams? Nope. Not even – Jay Ajayi had two had back-to-back 200-yard games in October of 2016. Didn't win the award. It went to Tom Brady. Wow. Uh, yeah. I would think Ricky would have had it. But hey. Ricky, I believe, also had two 200-yard games in December of 2002 at Buffalo. And the following week in the Monday night game against Chicago, the only problem there – because the Dolphins were, were two and three in December. Rain man out here showing off. <laughs> I am, but sorry. What can I tell you? Anyway, uh, before <laughs> 2 won it in September, the last time the Dolphins had won it, it was 1993 with Scott Mitchell. And now they've done it back to back, back to my mind. So who will it be? Got to be Waddle, Waddle for October or Raheem, October. baby Raheem. Okay, there you go. Or, or, an or maybe a chain comes back and, and and tears it up. We, we shall see soon. Um, yeah, except they have their bias. It's going to be tough because they have their bias. So now the Dolphins in November are only going to have three games, and a chan's already going to miss one of them. That's that's going to be tough for him. Yeah. All right. Well, we're, that's yeah. it. We're going to wrap it up for all Dolphins podcasts. I want to announce that we are officially back on Apple on these Apple streets. You can find us anywhere you have the audio podcast by looking for All Dolphins. We made it one word just to simplify. You don't have to put the space. All Dolphins podcast. Um, like, tweet, subscribe. Subscribe right, is very please. important. Yeah. Hey, and do us a favor. If you like the show, actually rate it on the podcast. Um, give us a wonderful five-star rating. Um, these are all things that help us pilk up advertising advertising is what helps us feed our families and so does you listening watching participating in the show um we will be back friday um probably around four o'clock ish uh to do a game day wrap up and obviously we'll be saturday doing our live stream um we'll, we'll, we'll announce a time soon I, I really don't know yet uh so i know more decides i just say okay whatever cool oh, oh it's like that oh, okay no yeah, you know what your daughter doesn't have guitar practice every once in a while does she oh, like, does. 1 30 p.m on saturday so it'll have to be before that oh okay all right well we thank you for watching listening subscribing please share tell a friend um we will see you tomorrow thanks everyone